Well, good morning. We are so glad you decided to join with us in worship this morning. We're going to do things just a little different. I'm going to let y'all stay seated to start with. And um, we're going to sing this song. It's called, Oh, Come to the Altar. If you know it, feel free to sing along.
washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Stand and sing this with us. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. thank you for your blessed assurance God for all your many blessings God and we're so thankful that we can always come to the altar and know that your arms are open wide God that we are so blessed with your forgiveness God that you loved us so much you sent your only son to die on a cross that he shed his blood for us God we thank you for the opportunity to come into your house and worship you on this, your day. God, I love you, and I praise you, and I'm so thankful for all your many blessings, and thank you for this house of worship. It's in your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning. We came through some crazy weather yesterday, but it is a beautiful day today. And it's great to have you in the house of the Lord today. We've got folks in here. We've got folks down below us in the prayer meeting room. And we're so glad that you've chosen to worship with us today. Today, Dr. Bush is on vacation, uh, but you're in great hands because Barrett Stevenson is going to be leading our uh, worship today or bringing the message today, and it's always a treat to have Barrett do that. Barrett will leave you changed. You'll be different. You'll be challenged. You'll be better than you were, than you are even right now. You're pretty good right now, but we are so glad to have Barrett filling the pulpit today. Um, I hope that you'll just uh, enjoy your time here today. If you're a guest worshiping with us, we hope you'll enjoy the joy that you feel around you here. Um, and we look forward to you worshiping again with us soon. Thank you. 
Let's all stand together and sing, praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed redeemer. song this morning, but I want to give you a little backstory on it, just because it's, it's, not, it's not my normal normal song. So uh, when I was growing up uh, as a teenager and in high school, my mom and dad were part of a, a Southern Gospel group, and I uh, actually, uh, looking back now, I had the opportunity, um, I didn't always think so at the time, but I had the opportunity to go and play. Um, with them and travel on Saturday nights and Sunday mornings and all and my mom always had several songs that she would sing and uh, you know as a mama's boy nobody could sing it like my mom and uh, nobody ever will ever could and uh, that includes me but uh, some of my fondest memories looking back now were um, being with her and getting to play and, and hear her sing and so um, I'm going to do a song for you this morning that uh, she sang and it's one of my favorites um, it's called I Wouldn't Take Nothing for My Journey Now I started out working for the Lord many years ago had a lot of heartache, I met a lot of grief and woe. But when I would stumble, then I could humble down. And there I wouldn't say I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Gotta make it to heaven somehow. I know the devil tempts me and he tries to turn me around. He's offered everything that's got a name All the wealth I want in worldly fame If I could still I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now There's nothing in the world that could ever take the place of God's love Oh, silver and gold couldn't buy one touch from above But when 
when my soul needs healing, I begin to feeling his power. I can say thank the Lord I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I gotta make it to heaven somehow. No, the devil tempts me and he tries to turn me around. He's offered everything that's got a name, all the wealth I want and worldly fame. If I could still, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Gotta make it to heaven somehow. No, the devil tempts me and he tries to turn me around. He's offered everything that's got a name, all the wealth I want and worldly fame. If I could still, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. If I could still, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey For those of y'all that don't know, I live on a sheep farm. I raise sheep, St. Croix hair sheep. Got about 200 ewes at home that I take care of and that I shepherd. And, uh, you know, I got to, as I got to thinking about it, and, and I'm around these sheep all the time, I said, there's a sermon in some of the things that I've witnessed on the farm, the way these sheep act and behave. Do you know that shepherding is the oldest profession that there is? You know that sheep are the oldest domesticated animals that there are. We all know that David, the man after God's own heart, what was he? He was a shepherd. We all know that the angel appeared before the shepherds to tell about the birth of Jesus. Do you know that in the Bible, over 500 times, sheep and shepherding is mentioned? So I said, well, that's what we're going to preach on this morning. And that's what we're going to look at this morning. If you will... Turn with me in your Bible to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. We're going to start on verse 27. It says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. If you will, Mr. Burdett, put that video up there. And I, I shot this video a couple weeks ago on the farm and I just want you to listen. The Christians are called the sheep of this pasture. Where he is, know his voice. These sheep know my voice. So when I make my call, my sheep know that call. They know my voice. And, and you know, they call back to me. And they follow me. And that's very important for a shepherd that his sheep know his voice and that the sheep will follow him. Let me ask you this morning. Do you know your shepherd's voice? Do you know God's voice when he speaks to you and talks to you? Are you willing to trust him and willing to follow him? Because he wants to lead you. He wants to lead you. You know, when I first got into this business of sheep farming, probably ten years ago now, I knew nothing about sheep. And I got my first load of sheep, I, I put them in the pasture, and when I'd go back to try to get them to follow me, to feed them, they'd just look at me. They wouldn't chase me, they wouldn't know me, they didn't trust me. So it took years, not years, it probably took a month or so of me going there with feed to talk to them, to get them to trust me, and get them to follow me. I say this to say, it, it, it's not an overnight thing being able to hear the good shepherd's voice. You say, well, Barrett, how do you hear the good shepherd's voice? You know, let me tell you, that what, what you need to do is to get in God's Word. God's Word, the Bible right here, is how you hear God's voice. It's how He speaks to you. It's how He gets your attention. And another way is through getting on your knees and praying to God. In prayer is when you'll hear His voice and get to know His voice. I am so guilty of, when I'm in prayer, of doing all the talking and not enough listening. Sometimes when we're in prayer, we don't need to say anything, but we just need to listen for our good shepherd's voice speaking to us and prompting us and nudging us along. You know, I don't know about y'all, but we live in a very loud world right now. I mean, there are so many distractions. There are so many things pulling at our attention and pulling at our hearts and pulling at our minds. 
Sometimes when I feed my sheep, I'm in a hurry. I'm trying to get to Auto Pride or I'm trying to get to Old Creek Town to them ball fields where my boys are. And I fly in there and jump on my Kubota and I ride to that pen as fast as I can. And I kind of holler two or three times and I don't really put a lot of effort into it. You think the sheep come? No, they don't hear my voice. I have to stop and go get on a high place and cut off that loud Kubota and holler for them to be able to hear me so they know to come. I have to cut some of the noise out. I encourage you, congregation, this morning, find some of the noise in your life that's keeping you from hearing the good shepherd's voice and cut it out so you can hear him calling you and directing you. Why do sheep need a shepherd? What, what's the purpose? Why has there been shepherds for so many years? Why are they needed? Sheep are not the smartest animals to ever walk. Their IQ is not very good. I can only imagine back when David was shepherding, he didn't have fences. He had to keep them directed and going in the right direction. My sheep, I put them in a pasture, and I've watched them do it a many times. They'll find the fence, and they follow the fence all the way around because they have no sense of direction. The fence keeps them on my property. And listen, we are the same way. We are compared to sheep in the Bible so many times. You know, as I was writing this sermon, I couldn't help but think of one of my favorite hymns, Come Thy Fount of Many Blessings. I want to read you some of the lyrics of that hymn this morning. See if you can relate. Let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, O oh, take and seal it. Learning the good shepherd's voice and following him seals our heart definitely to be more prone to follow his guidance, to follow his guidance. You know, a lot of times at the farm, I want to bring in new sheep. I need to bring in a new ram where I don't interbreed or bring in some new ewes that milk good and I want to put their genetics into the flock. First ones I ever bought, it was 25 head and I took them to a 30 acre pasture behind my house that's got some woods in it. And I turned them out of that trailer. I was a greenhorn. I didn't know what I was doing. I let them out and it took me two months to get my hands back on them. They would not follow me. They did not know me. They did not know my voice. But through years of experience, congregation, I have learned a trick. Now, when I buy new stock and I want to put them into my flock, I take four or five of my old, trustworthy ewes that are in my flock that know me and that trust me. And I put them old ewes in the trailer with them young sheep that, that, that don't know me. Before I open the gate, I let them in that trailer with them. And I, then I can put them wherever I want to. And when I go back, and when I hip, hip, them old ewes raise their head, and they come straight to me, and those young ones that don't know me from Adam's house cat follow them straight to me. And I can get my hands on them to nurture them, to feed them, to vaccinate them, to see about them, to be their shepherd. Bells should be going off in y'all's minds right now. We are part of God's flock. I hope that he knows all of y'all real well. I hope you know his voice. I hope that you follow him when he calls to you. And I hope people that don't know him see you following him and they follow you to the foot of that cross. They follow you and they begin to trust God. They begin to see God and hear God and follow God. Now I have generations that, on, of sheep on my farm that have taught other generations and they didn't know me and now they all know me. And all oh, that is how the church and that is how discipleship and that is how the Christian faith is going to grow. It's through us taking non-believers to Jesus. Please listen to God's voice and follow Him where others can follow you. You know, I sold two different groups of ewe lambs this week to different farmers wanting to get into sheep farming. And uh, I, I try to give them some hard-earned advice that I've learned. And I have three P's of sheep farming that you've got to get your arms around if you're going to be profitable. The first one I want to talk to y'all about is predators. I never imagined I would be preaching to a congregation on my three P's of sheep farming, but as I wrote this sermon, I realized how much of this stuff correlates with our Christian faith and our walk. Predators, it says right here in John 10.10, 10, it says that 
The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I consider predators just like the devil. Those predators come to my farm to steal, kill, and destroy my lamb crop. You know, there's several different kind of predators. The first one I want to talk to you all about is the fox. All right, one morning I went out and I counted 27 lambs in the pasture. All right, I go, that was on a Tuesday. I went back on Saturday hoping to count maybe 36 or 38. You always want a positive game, and I counted 17. And I was just sick over it. I couldn't see anywhere where nothing was digging under the fence. I didn't see any varmint tracks in the sand. I didn't see any visible signs of predators killing them. But we set some foothold traps around the pasture. And in a couple days, a big red fox was caught. And when I investigated and cut him open, there were six scrappy tags in his stomach where he had been eating my lambs. Y'all, the biggest, the biggest trick the devil has up his sleeve is to make us all believe that he doesn't exist. He likes to be sneaky like that fox and ease in there undetected because it's hard to get, you know, it's hard to pinpoint something if you don't know what it is. That's one of his sneakiest tricks. Another predator that wreaks havoc on my flock is coyotes. They're a lot more bold. They howl at night and let me know right where they are. They dig with their paws under the electric fence and they, sh they show me where they're coming and going and dare me to stop them. They go and they kill the sheep and a lot of times they just kill them for the fun of it and they leave them dead in the pasture for me to find. And you know, the devil has the same tactics. I've seen coyotes come into my pasture, visual, I'll be sitting there, and they'll sneak into the corner under the fence and they charge at the flock and they separate them. And then they find a vulnerable weak one and they catch it and kill it. The devil uses the same tactic. He loves to separate marriages. He loves to separate churches. He loves to separate Christian believers from getting together and honor and praising and worshiping Jesus. And if he can get us separated and singled out, we're a lot more vulnerable to his evil ways. Church, I encourage us this morning. It says in Ephesians right here, Ephesians 6, 12, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Congregation, our nation is divided. Our nation is so divided right now. We have got to come back together as one nation under God if we're going to make it. Listen, the devil is scattering us. I pray that we realize that we are not each other's enemy, that the devil is the enemy, and that we need to stand together in one flock under the good shepherd's lead and face the enemy face on, together as one. My sheep are a lot better off when they stay together. When they get separated, it's chaotic. When we as Christian believers get separated, it is chaotic. We need to stay together. All right, this second issue, my second P that I warn these farmers of is parasites. All right, you've got to get predators under control, but you also have to have parasite control on your farm. To get scientific with you, it's the Hemonchus brown stomach worm is the one that kills more sheep on my farm than anything. You know, my two boys can go out in the pasture and show me a sheep that has a parasite burden quickly. They're signs that you can see. Their, their, their coat's not as shiny. They're lethargic. They like to get off by themselves. And what it is, is Webster defines a parasite as it feeds on its host until the host gets rid of it or the host dies. Well, listen, sin in our life is just like parasites in my sheep. The quicker we can recognize that sin and get to the foot of the cross and let the blood of Jesus Christ drench us and wash that sin out of our life, the quicker we can become getting healed. The quicker I find that sick sheep, get it to the sick pen, and get some wormer in it, the quicker it has a chance of getting better and getting healed and getting back into the flock. You know, when we have parasites in our mind and in our heart, don't we all love to kind of get off to ourselves, kind of pull away from the flock? We don't feel worthy. We believe the devil's lies that we don't have what it takes to be a good Christian, and we want to separate ourselves. This is the tricky thing about sheep farming. When I started sheep farming 10 years ago, I used Sidectin as a wormer to kill worms. 
I could find this. I could do a good job shepherding. I could find the sick sheep. I could medicate it, and it would still die. So I take them to Auburn, and I say, "Look, I'm doing all I can. My sheep still are dying. What's wrong?" Mr. Stevenson, if I would have you to know that the Hamachus brown stomach worm now has become resistant to Cydectin, and it no longer works. So I had to change to Ivamec. Used it four or five years. Had to change to prohibit. I can go on and on and tell you the different wormers I had to use. But listen to me, congregation. The sin in your life will never become resistant to the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ has been forgiven sinners 2,000 years ago. The blood of Jesus Christ will forgive your sins today. And the blood of Jesus Christ will forgive your sins from now on. It does not become resistant. And that is good news. We just have to be wise enough to go to the foot of the cross and let Jesus' blood wash the parasites out of our system. Romans 3, 23 through, two, through 24 says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Listen, the last thing that I tell farmers when they buy sheep is the last P in my P's. Predators, parasites, is price. It's price. If you don't get a good price for your livestock when you sell them, you will not be in the livestock raising business long. You've got to get a good price for what you're doing. Christians, I tell you this morning, you can be the best person in the world. You can have the biggest heart. You can come through them doors and sit in here every time a sermon is preached. You can obey the Ten Commandments your whole life. But listen, if you don't accept the free gift of grace that Jesus died for you on that cross, you are missing the boat. You've got to accept that free gift of grace. And listen, the price that God paid for you has been paid in full, paid dearly for you, gave His Son to die for you, and that price is paid. I encourage you, if you don't know Jesus and you have not accepted that gift of grace to do that and, and become part of this flock, the Good Shepherd's flock, and follow Him, and follow Him, you know, sheep prices are a roller coaster ride, just like cattle prices and everything else. You can't put your faith in commodity prices. Any farmer knows that. But this morning, I promise you, you can put your faith in the fact that the price for your soul has been paid and it will never be snatched away. With that, I want to read the last part of this scripture here in this, in this chapter. I want to start in verse 28 and read you this. I gave them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. If you will, let's put that picture of that lamb up there. That's me holding a picture of one of my lambs that was born a few, four or five days ago. As y'all look at that picture of that lamb up there, I want you to think about the perfect lamb. The Lamb of God, Jesus' Son, who came down here from heaven to save me and you and everybody who wants to put their trust and their faith in you. Listen to me, congregation. There's going to be more coyotes come to my farm and kill my sheep. There's going to be more parasites that get resistant to prohibit, and they're going to die. There's going to be times that I don't get the right price for them. I, 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 I probably going to be times I sell them for less than I can grow them. But listen, no one can ever snatch your salvation from you. God has you and he's holding you in your hand. He says, he says, I know my people. He knows you. If he knows you, your eternal life can never be snatched away. This is the fourth P. Perish. Perish. You will never perish. You will never perish if you trust in Jesus. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this congregation of believers. Dear Lord, the devil has a lot of tricks. He's a fierce opponent, but he has been defeated by the blood of your son. When he rose from the dead, you have won the battle with the devil. You are a good shepherd. And Lord, it should give us as Christians the most confidence to know that our good shepherd will lead us if we have sense enough to follow him through any trial, through any tribulation, 
through any problem on this earth, if we follow that good shepherd, we will be okay and the eternal life will never be snatched from us and we will never perish. We love you, Father. Please give us the wisdom to, to follow you. Please give us the wisdom to, to bring non-believers that don't know your voice and who don't follow you to follow us to you where, you, where you can wash their sins with that mighty power of the blood of the cross. Dear Lord, thank you for giving us this church to worship in this morning, for letting us all be back together and not scattered. The devil thought he had a hand up on us when he scattered us, but we weren't scattered, we were just deployed. And now we're back together in your house, worshiping and honoring and serving you the best we can. Please let us go this week and keep us safe and keep us healthy. Please let us drown out any distractions and all the noise so we can hear your precious voice. Your word tells us to be still and know that you are Lord. Please give us the wisdom to do just that. Let us honor you by the way we handle people, the way we treat people. Let our lives tell the story of how we love you. Dear Lord, if there's anybody in this congregation this morning that doesn't know you, never heard your voice, but would like to get to know you, I pray that you give them the courage to walk down this aisle when Russ comes up here in a minute and offers this invocation. I pray that you will get to, everyone in this room will be get to know your voice louder and stronger and better through prayer, through meditation of your word. We love you, Father. Thank you for being patient with us. Sheep are aggravating, and we're just like them. And we stray, and we wander, and we get away from you, and you gladly take us back time after time after time. Thank you for that. Thank you for being a patient, good shepherd. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being here today. I know you've been challenged and strengthened and encouraged uh, through the message that Barrett brought for us. Barrett, we thank you so much for filling the pulpit today. And uh, I know it's going to be a great week for you ahead uh, as one of God's followers. Um, let's close now in prayer. Father, we thank you for being our great shepherd. We thank you for um, teaching us to hear your voice. We thank you for knowing that we're in your hands and that nothing can snatch us away from you. We thank you for the protection that we have. We thank you for the ability that, you, that you've given us to lead others to you. We ask you, Father, to help us remember these words in our hearts that we've heard today and that as we go through this next week, that we'll find ways to glorify you through them. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.